Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. Welcome back into the Sports Fanatic News Phillies Baseball Series Preview as we are here to preview the return of Gabe Kapler as his Giants come into Citizens Bank Park to take on Joe Girardi's Philadelphia Phillies. We have the, as soon as this loads and reminds me, the 8-5 and five Giants, there we go, against our 7-6 and six Phillies. We have Kevin Gosman, who has 18 Ks with a 320 ERA, who hasn't got a decision, oddly enough, in either of those games. Um, <laughs> and Anderson has... 0-1 with a 4 ERA and 6 Ks. Chase Anderson's both appearances this year have been five innings of two-run ball, three strikeouts, two hits against the Mets, and then in one of those seven-inning games, uh, four innings of, th- of three hits, two runs again, and three walks in that game, but also three strikeouts. So two pretty solid appearances since in a seven-inning game. We've seen a lot of managers take guys out after the fourth oh, yeah. just because of the way uh, those games are managed. So two solid performances for him where when it comes to Kevin Gosman, his two appearances this year, one or three appearances this year, excuse me, uh, one has been against Seattle. He pitched 6.2 innings pitch, gave up one run, seven innings against San Diego. So two pretty good opponents there. Uh, seven innings pitch, one run again. And then on the 13th against Cincinnati, who's been one of the hotter offenses, that was his first struggle start. Six innings, five runs. So obviously we're hoping he pitches like that. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but but um, there was, that's been Kevin Gosman this far. That's why his numbers are up to a 320. Uh, what do you think of the pitching matchup in this first game? I'm just going to throw it out there. I would have to, um, from first glance, even though I do like how Anderson's looked, I think he's looked like a very capable fifth starter, fourth, fifth starter, whatever, you, where Moore has it. Like, he actually looks like a guy I can rely on as, like, a bottom of my rotation, just keep me two to four runs a game in it. Where, But I still would give the Giants the advantage with Gosman. Gosman seems like he's an ascending pitcher since he went since last year in San Francisco – um, his numbers have gone up. I know he's somebody that when they were talking about him, who's that pitch on him? Al Leiter, there we go. Okay. Um, yeah, what, a they, name. what a name. When they were doing the um like movement stuff of showing like how his like delivery got better and it's helped him like solve stuff out there in San Francisco. To me, he just seems like one of those ascending guys where Anderson's one of those guys did great in twenty nineteen, so they're almost Equal, except for Gosman, just seems like he's ascending with Chase. Like I said, just seems like that prototypical two to four keeps you in games. Kev might be that top, like that third starter, like an Eflin, basically, um, when he's actually doing what he's been doing since San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, I think if you want to lean one way or the other, I guess you can lean towards Gosman getting the edge. I think, honestly... In all honesty, they're very similar pitchers, especially with Anderson. I know he only hasn't Actually, he might not even made a start in Philly yet. Um, now that I think of it, because we went on the no, big road trip. But I think with the bats being at home and everything, I think we obviously have a slight advantage there. But I mean, hey, Gosman gave up five runs in two no, innings. No, he did. The, the one of the six was in Philly. Four six was in Philly for Anderson. Okay. So one of them, one in Manhattan. But like, so I, I think you're looking at a situation where, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, but Gosman gave up five runs in two innings against the Reds before settling in. So I think he's hittable as well. So I, I think these are two evenly matched pitchers almost. If you want to lean towards one, yeah, you can lean towards Kevin. But uh, no, overall, I mean, I think it's going to be a great battle between two teams off to a good start so far. And well, we'll see what we're able to do here. But no, I think... Uh, well, the thing that concerns me about Gosman is, um, what's 18 Six, right? Yeah, six times three is 18. There we go, math. Um, Math's hard. Yeah, so the Phillies have been striking out pretty good. If you average six strikeouts a game, I would round that up to about nine, um, probably, against the Phillies since when I was at the game, I was looking at – I was very much this year, more than any of the year, paying attention to all those inner stats that they put on the scoreboard, like the K rate. And by gosh, is our our guy's K rate percentages – just astronomically awful. Oh, they're, yeah, they're but, terrible like, right now. Like, like, a lot of them are over 20%. So that's the reason why I favor Gosman in this, just because of how he can strike guys out where Moore's more of a pitch-to-contact guy, where I feel like most of the Giants hitters at this point of their career, except for Evan Longoria and Buster Posey, are both getting off the hot starts, are more purely contact-driven. Like, yeah, that's, that's fair. 
So I feel like that's the other reason I favor him a little bit more there. No, I don't disagree. I think you bring up a good point there, and, and we'll see the way it's way it's able to play out. So no, I hear what you're saying, but I think uh, again, but that to me tells me it's pretty close when you're pulling those, pulling that, pulling that out. I mean, I just think I mean, I'm sure we don't haven't looked at the Giants, but I'm sure their strikeout numbers are probably decent. And I know this and talk about the starting pitching matchups, but the way I don't know if you watched any of those Marlins games, but uh, the way the Marlins played them seemed like this team is uh, a be a fun matchup, and Giants got a beatable bullpen is what uh, it looks like to me. No, that that's definitely exactly that that's that's I, I agree with you. That's where you got to hit them. They do from paying attention and watching condensed games on MLB TV and what have you. Their bullpen definitely with Trevor Rogers and the other folks out there, uh, Tyler's brother, um, definitely uh, have guys that when they're off, they're really off. So, yeah, they definitely have a beatable bullpen. They're the team that if they can stay in it, they're going to need to. Now, I'm not saying they're going to get anywhere near this, but they're going to need to trade for people like the Nationals did in order to stay in it if they want to stay in it once the deadline comes near. Now, they're not going to do what the Nationals did unless if a miracle happens, but in order to even (laughs) make a wild card, they're going to have to trade for bullpen help. That's definitely what stands out for the Giants. But when it comes to facing Anderson, and only a couple people that have enough at bats for it to be sampled, where Buster Posey has 11 and is hitting 273. Longoria has eight, which is on my borderline of if I consider that sample, but he's hitting 250. Um, Crawford has 11 and is hitting 0.91. So he definitely gets Brandon Crawford out pretty mm-hmm. close. I'm sure he's going to be very displeased that uh, they didn't skip over Chase Anderson. Um Brandon Belt hits 250 against him, so a guy that can hit him, and then Slater in eight at bats hits uh, 250. Other guys, Shostremski 333, that's in three at bats. So no other guys really have enough proven track. So he seems like he could be able to get through this lineup as long as he can take advantage of the Longorias, the Posies, and the Belts, who seem like he's having one of his off days, probably could hit him since they all hit 250 or 27 in the 270s against him. What about the former Philly and 500 against him? Yeah, that's in two at bats. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So I think that, that that didn't have a big enough sample size. Where when it comes to Gosman, D.D. Gregorius is the best sample because he has 29 at bats and is hitting 276 against him, which is pretty solid. Yeah. Um, so you would look for him to do good. And Harper is five for 10 and 10 at bats is hitting 500. So there we go, math. Um, Brad Miller. Brad Miller should get the start tomorrow. Look at that. 357 against Kevin Gosman. Put Brad Bamboo Magic Miller in that lineup. You know, Brad Miller <laughs> plays. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Solution. <clears throat> Solution time, ladies and gentlemen. It's not his best position. <laughs> but Brad Miller, I'm pretty sure in his major league career, has been thrown into center field. <laughs> I mean, he yeah, if you want to. Why are you just still clutching your heart for center field? We could move him over, but yeah, if we want to do that, either way, Brad Miller from uh, his 14 at bat, hitting 357 with a homer and three RBI. I feel like with how much we look at stats nowadays, you almost would want to put him in the lineup. And then um, Torres in 17 at bat, it's 294 against. Uh, Kevin well, you could get Reese there, I'll put Miller at first. Yeah, you could put you could put Miller at first. You're right. You could give Reese a day off. That's a good point too. And then Segura hits 500 against them. But so yeah, is, so is, I mean, matchups. assuming everyone watching this one has watched our uh, recap of the uh, Phillies and Cardinals at this point, when we're talking about Mickey Moniak, well, maybe Gosman. You get some other guys in this lineup who have hit him before. You get them on base. Maybe this is a good matchup for Moniak to get his. Uh, Got to hit the season and get things started rolling for him this year and snap that over 32 streak that uh, the Philly it's center field is on. Yeah. Not just Moniac, yeah. the Philly center field is on. Yeah, we're not trying to knock the kid that much and have him be like, well, what the hell are these guys talking about? I'm not- yeah, I, I know Mickey Moniac's <laughs> watching this this, uh, <laughs> this show, so we're pulling for you. Hopefully you get that start against Gosman and you, uh, you get that first hit. And once you do, we can credit the show for uh, getting you on, on board. Yeah. But over Reese, I would almost, just because I feel like Reese might be able to hit Gosman, just in my opinion, I would almost rest Kutch just because of his struggles, let Brad. Yeah, I, I, I agree that, with you. That, I was just basing off of it. We were talking numbers against Gosman, so that's why yeah. I, Hoskins is only hitting 182 off him. 
Oh, yeah, well, Kutch is hitting 600, but that's in five at-bats. So, yeah, you might want to put Kutch in for that reason. It is in five at-bats where then you might want to rest. You might even want to put in the uh, guy that whenever he gets put in the lineup seems to strike some magic into the uh, arm since uh, JT's hitting 111 and nine at-bats. Uh, throw uh, Andrew Knapp in there, you know. <laughs> More Knapp home on time. <laughs> hey, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, but I would say this game for me – this game's going to come down to, if you, you can say if you agree or disagree, um, who jumps on, um, one, who could potentially jump on one of these two starters early who are um, both um, guys that are more of location pitchers than, Gosman does have a faster pitch than, obviously, Anderson, but more strikes you out because of his movement and locations on pitches. Same with Anderson if he does punch you out, but he's more of a, ground guy uh then they are um just pure let me blow past you i would say this game is going to be who can jump on whose guy earlier and then who can push to the pen sooner because whenever you're facing guys that you might be able to jump on especially with some of the numbers we have in our lineup with dd harper and gene against him and miller if you put him in you would want to get to that Giants bullpen. And if you get to our bullpen soon enough, you're going to have the lesser guys put in there. So I think it's who can jump on their starter and who gets to the bullpen sooner. I don't disagree, but I do think this, though, with the way we've been struggling, I think with this Giants lineup, I'm going to say it now, and I guess I don't know if we're wrapping up on this first game, but I'll throw my prediction here as well. But I think this is going to be one of those odd games. I truly believe that. I think you're going to see a pitcher's duel here in the first, let's say, three or four innings. I think Anderson and Gosman are going to work well first time around. And that second time around, maybe into that third, depending on where it's at in the game, is when these offenses are going to start getting together, getting it going. So I think you're going to be looking at like a 1-1, 2 nothing either way, uh, 2-1, maybe somewhere along those lines, uh, to start this game. And then about the fifth and you'll start to see one of these guys, if not both, start to get a little tired out there, and then you'll start chasing to the pen. I agree with you, though. I think it is get to the pen first, middle innings, uh, win those middle innings and off that bullpen, and then let your uh, back end and how well Naris and company have been thrown and let them close it out in terms of hopefully the Phillies are winning that one. But no, I think this middle innings is going to eat, eat into it, and it's going to be huge. But I expect the pitching duel first couple innings turn into around, a, let's say, a – Six to five, six four game, but give me a six four. No, give me a give me a seven five. Uh, Philadelphia Phillies victory. Uh, game one will put um, player to the game. I'm gonna say uh, Bryce Harper. I'm gonna say he continues his. I, mean, I don't think he's gonna sit there and say three for three again like he did uh, on Sunday afternoon against the Cardinals. But give me an, a a Bryce uh, RBI extra base hit, whether it's a double or a home run. And I think he'll be the standout star, and you get about five innings of three or four run ball from Anderson, turn it over to a Brogdon hold and a narrow save. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be good uh, because then you would not get to the um, Hales and Velasquez of the pen. You would just throw it to the good guys of the pen. But, yeah, it's about who can get to the pen sooner um, and then who can capitalize on those middle innings. I agree. This game might be a little bit uh, higher scoring. Um I'm going to go five to four. I'll say the Phillies will win because seven five. Um, I just don't feel as good about us having to score seven to win a game. So I'm going to go with five to four just because we've only had three games that I've really liked our offense this year. Um, <laughs> where Gosman with his K rate, like I said, is not somebody where if you strike out six per game, I'll round that up to about nine against how some of them are striking out. Nah. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go five to four when it comes to that one. I think we're scored most of our runs, honestly, off of their bullpen and only about two to three off of a uh, Gosman. Hey, oh, it sounds like you agree with me about my early game predictions there. Yeah. But yeah, hey, it's not about right. who you score them off of. It's about what the score says at the end of the game. So No, I agree. And then the second game, we have youngsters still trying to figure it out in the majors. Um, Logan Webb. Going up against Zach Wheeler, so I don't think we really need to go over who has the advantage of the pitching matchup on this one. Um, Logan Webb, though, just to go over his numbers this season, 
in his first game on the 3rd of April, went five and a third innings and seven hits, three earned runs, and five Ks against the Mariners, which is actually a team that's off to a good start, looking pretty good this year. Then against the Rockies, um, he pitched five innings, eight hits, three earned runs, two baseballs, and six strikeouts. So that's all right, but not that great against a Rockies lineup. Um, yeah. And then you have... It looks like he pitched out of the pen against Cincinnati um, on the 14th because he only pitched one inning and had one strikeout in that tilt. So he's looked good in his first start against Seattle, which is actually a pretty good lineup. I would I would say eight hits and five against Colorado is not that great. Um, and then um, especially when it's said versus Colorado. So that wasn't in Colorado. That was in San Francisco. So um and then yeah. you have one inning against Cincinnati, which was pretty good. So he's been, I would say, average. <laughs> I would say would probably be the word to use for his first three outings. That um, brings his ERA, since obviously one great relief outing doesn't bring someone's ERA down. Um, it brings it to a 4.76 to start with 12 strikeouts. So real was one and two uh, because of run support. Um with a three ERA and 20 strikeouts. And um, he, of course, faced the Atlanta Braves going seven innings and 10 strikeouts in that great start back at the beginning of the season. Then struggled against those same Braves in Atlanta going only four and two-thirds with seven hits, three runs, four walks, and four strikeouts. But then bounced back with a pretty good game um, where he battled against his former team. The Mets giving up 10 hits, but they get through six and a third only giving up three. So, obviously, we would like to see more of a first game, Zach. We were in this game, or at least a mix of first and third. Um, but I say we obviously definitely have the advantage in the pitching matchup here. Not without question. Yeah, and the Giants' bullpen is not very good, where this is a game I would be kind of disappointed, honestly. If, if we, we lose. don't win, yeah, just because the bullpen of the Giants has been very unimpressive this year. And Webb is a guy that normally only gets through, like I read, five innings, five innings. He's not normally going to get deep into a game. So if you let him get deep into a game, you're doing something <laughs> a little wrong there with <laughs> at that point of his career yet. No, I hear you. I agree with you completely. I think this is a game. I mean, obviously, I'm not, no one's going to call it a must win game. I'm not like, no one's going to sit there and say that this early. But this is obviously a game you want, especially if obviously we're doing this as a preview. So we don't know what the outcomes are of the games yet. So, obviously, if you somehow – or not somehow, but if you end up dropping game one of the series, obviously this is a game you really want to – would like to take um, in a big situation like that, obviously, against a, a, a decent Giants team. We'll see what they are, but I think uh, you really have to make use of, of what these clubs are going to be about, and I'm excited to see what they're able to do going forward for this team. But, no, we really need to find a way to, to beat um, Logan Webb there. And uh, I expect it. I think yeah, our offense has been in a little bit of struggles left and right, but I think that's something you're able to be able to take advantage of in this game as well, and uh, find some success. And I think this is a game you could see this offense really start to get going because they're they're due for a breakout game. Let's just say that. Yeah. Well, the Giants have been winning based off of a couple of their starters, like before he went down, Cueto was pitching solid this year. Absolutely. It's more based off of that, which has had their ERA to be 3.104, which is fourth, and WHIP 1.15, where only, I would say, two or three relief pitchers have really positively contributed um, to those numbers, where it's definitely a lot more uh, because of their starting staff there. So that's why when it came to those games, it's, it's pivotal with the Giants. Just get to their bullpen early, and uh, you're at a major advantage where Gosman in the first game, that's not as easy to do. But against Webb, who averages less innings, I feel yeah. like you should be able to push him uh, to the bullpen earlier. And I feel like my prediction for this game, this isn't one we have to harp on uh, too long for me because Posey hits 400, but in five at-bats. Liguri hits 333, but in six at-bats. Yastrzemski 333 and three at-bats. The best sample there is Brandon Belt hits 364 and 11 at bat, so you're going to want to really be careful with him. But um, 
Other guys, that's not the biggest sample, so we might be able to get to those guys. I feel like this is going to be a game that the Phillies offense can do pretty well after scoring how I predicted five to get 5-4 in the first game. I'll go five again, but I think you should only give up with wheels on the mound. I'll go 5-1 in this game. I'll double up to five. We'll go Pat Burrell back to back. Burrell to one. <laughs> um, now, I think... Uh... Or I, Robin Roberts. <laughs> I think uh, this is a game you're going to win your fourth straight series to start the year at home. Um, as we already talked about in our recap about this team, uh, first time they won their first three at home since 98. I think you'll get that fourth one here. And I think it's going to be a big time game in the sense of you're going to like what we see out of this game. And I, I think this is going to be similar to that mess game where you kind of beat, beat up on them a little bit and the Cardinals. I think Phillies win this one fairly easily. Uh, just because, again, I think Willie's going to do his job. I think you're going to get to Logan Webb, uh, a guy still trying to find his journey here in the league, and you have a lot of big names in the lineup here. Uh, give me a 10-3 10, 10 to Phillies victory um, over the Giants here on this. Uh, that would be a fine Tuesday evening. You went 10-3? to 10-3. to 10-3. Ten to so think the you offense seven, shows up. You had 7-5 to five in the first game and then 10-3 to three in the second game. I had 5-4 to four in the first game. Um, that is going to be against Gosman, and then uh, five to one. Um, in the second game, that is going to be against Logan Webb. Our third game is going to be against a very interesting pitcher, um, in Anthony D. Scalfani, who went from pitching very good, um, for the Reds in 2019, and then in the COVID affected 2020 season, basically doing a Chase Anderson. Uh, right. Having a very good 19, and then just really struggling mightily in 20. And now to start this year has just been balling <laughs> and has a 1.06 ERA in three starts. Unbelievable. Um, 16 strikeout. Uh, and one of them was against San Diego where he pitched five innings and gave up one run and walked three people and still only gave up one run. That's actually more impressive than it is at the time. Right. Um, and had four strikeouts. And then against Colorado, he did, yes, he gave up six hits, but he gave up no runs and had eight strikeouts. So that's kind of what I'm talking about, like, that's what I would like to see again. Like I'd like to see against Colorado. Where when you looked at Webb, um, you don't love seeing that Colorado thing as much. So that that's kind of what I was getting at there. And then against Miami, real quick, just to say what he has: six innings, four hits, one earned run. That's what he did against Miami. So I would say two teams that have started off pretty good this year since the Marlins went on that win streak to come back in the standing, and then another team that Colorado is very mid. But he pitched good against two good teams, I would say, to start the season. Yeah, and I was going to say, while we're running through some stats, let me give you this stat. He's 3-2 and two with a 5.34 ERA and his six career starts against the Phillies. So kind of obviously uh, a, a, pl- a pl- What plus. What is it? Is that back when uh, – is a couple of them back in the one season he was with the Marlins, I would think. Maybe I, I don't. That doesn't have exactly what team okay. he was going to happen. But no, yeah, he's three and two with a five point three four ERA and his six appearances against the Phillies. So obviously, a winning record, but a high ERA there. Some fun numbers: Hoskins hitting five hundred against him in six at bats. Um, that's really the biggest number there. Harper's three seventy five and eight, and McCutcheon's three seventy five and eight as well. So we'll see what we're able to do there. But it should be a fun matchup between those two, especially with how well Eflin's been facing or throwing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Eflin's been thrown really well. Di Scofani in 19 looked like a guy that was going to the right direction, um, at least to be a good guy that you want through your four or five spot of your rotation, just like Anderson, and then fell off last year. Well, this year, he's off to a mega hot start. Um, And then you have Eflin, who's off to a very good start himself. Both guys have 16 strikeouts. To start the season, excuse me, and Eflin, just like Wheeler, pitched a great seven innings in his first game against the Braves and had eight strikeouts, one run. And then he struggled, just not struggled, but had an off game because he didn't struggle. He actually battled through six innings and gave up four. Had an off game in the second game against Atlanta um, and then came back and gave up only two against St. Louis, of course, uh, the game that we recapped in the video before the, um, the Friday evening game uh, to answer back there. So I think... This is if both guys are at their best, um, an even pitching matchup. Um, I would say, but um, I would, I would, I would say it still comes down to how the Phillies work the at bats 
since when the longest D. Scalfani went in his outings thus far have been six innings against Colorado and Miami. So if you work the at-bats, try to get to that bullpen in the fifth rather than the sixth, I think you have a good chance to win this one too and potentially get the sweep. Yeah, I think the way with these, uh, this, uh, the way he's uh, thrown this year, I think yeah, you'd have to probably lean to him. Obviously, one point six array. I think you take full on like who would I trust more. I'm probably gonna lean Eflin. So like you said, at the best, they're both throwing the best, probably an even matchup. But I think overall career career wise and like my expectations expectations, I think I lean towards Eflin. And this this could be a series you go out and sweep the Giants. This could be a great series you go out and lose two out of three. In all honesty, it's gonna be a nice battle. I think this is a good. Early non-division test here after a good test with the Cardinals that he passed. And I think it's going to be a fun uh, fun three-game series. And obviously, this Wednesday is going to be a getaway game, 1 o'clock. I don't, you're the one up in that area, so I don't have the, like, the weather forecast in front of me yet. And we all know how fast that can change. But, uh, no, it's going to be a fun battle. Now, I think uh, Philly should win this series. We'll see if they take two. We'll see if they take three. But, um, honestly, like, if you're able to go out and win that uh, Chase Anderson uh, match up with uh, Kevin Gosman. I think you have a good shot to, to pull off the sweep here, in all honesty. Yeah, that's the big game. If you're able to win that one, which is either even, like we said itself, or will be slightly leaning towards Goss, um, then you would that would give us leaning towards a sweep, because I would be disappointed, like I said. with It's not that Webb hasn't pitched it better this year, going off of his career numbers, which are in the five ERAs. It's just he doesn't pitch deep into games. So I would be disappointed if you don't get to that bullpen and take advantage of them in game two. Um, And then in game three, you have probably an even pitching matchup just because of how hot Di Scalfani is this year. Um, Also is a guy, by the way, that I thought the Phillies should have had some interest in after he left Cincinnati, but that's not here nor there. We can move on from that. Um. And the going up against Zach Eflin. Um, so we'll have to see. But in terms of the weather, um, since you brought it up, we're looking at 67 tomorrow with a 48 at night. Um, Tuesday, 73 with 54 at night. So that's pretty good. Um, there are occasional rain showers for the getaway game day game. Um for Wednesday, according to right now, well, uh, consider it be cloudy, considerable cloudiness. That's a, that's an interesting way to say that. Um, with occasional rain showers is how Weather Channel has it. Shouldn't they just, couldn't they just say considerably cloudy? Not considerable cloudiness. <laughs> I, I don't know weather terms. That's about my pay grade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, this isn't a weather podcast. So anyway, um, <laughs> moving moving <Right>. back to, <laughs> moving back to the Phillies, the getaway day just for your weather update might be the one day you get a little bit of rain. But we had a little bit of rain drizzle. If it's just that type of crap, like Friday, then you'll be fine. Um, that was still a very much enjoyable game. That game I went to last Friday, um, with my friend. But I think um, we're both in agreement here. If they can win this first game, Chase against Kevin Gosman then there's a good chance our Philly should be able to sweep this series because you should be able to take game two. Well, then game three, if we lost, I wouldn't be pissed because T. Scalfani's balling yeah. this year, like I just said. It's just if you can get to the bullpen quick enough since the, he's balling, but he usually only pitches six innings even when he's pitching great. If you can get to the bullpen again, you should still be able to be the team that can win that game based off of your offense compared to their offense and also how your bullpen is pitching compared to their bullpen. Yeah, no, I agree with you. This could be a fun game. Um, get out to the park. Let's, let's get out there and, and, and show we love being back in the park. And, and I think, uh, I don't know, it's hard to sweep a team. I'm going to say the Phillies end up dropping this game late um, in a battle. I don't know, it's just tough. I don't know. I'm tempted to pick the sweep. Last time I picked, I don't know. I, I'm torn. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna lean towards a five. Uh, I'm gonna go five three Giants win. As they salvage the getaway game. Yeah, I mean this game will obviously be interesting. If you have to go to the bullpen earlier, the Phillies might get help by rain. Um, since we have the better bullpen, it would hurt us maybe in the next series. But for this particular game, um. <laughs> You could potentially get help by rain um, if it takes him out of the game sooner. 
Um, but we'll have to see. I agree with you. It's tough to predict sweeps, and I usually consider it a jinx. So <laughs> just, for the, just, for, just for the sake of that, um, I'm going to say that uh, we are going to lose um, the getaway game, but I'm going to put it at 3-2. to two. I think it'll be one of those games that is very uh, better pitched, uh, especially usually uh, – crappy now the other day did not speak to that friday night when it was rainy and a little damp but normally those are not the best days to score nine runs like they did that day um so i feel like that's the other reason why i'm gonna go three to two the phillies uh will lose the last game there and they'll be able to still take two out of three and win the first four home series to then have their first day off um, since the eighth, which is then their last day off until May tenth, so enjoy it. Um, and then they will go on into Colorado to take on the aforementioned Rockies, who we better damn well beat in a series. Um, Bet- and we're pre- we'll pre- preview that for you. Probably sometime it'll come out Thursday night or Friday morning. Um, before that series, which is an eight forty start time on Friday evening. But we thank you all for joining for the San Francisco Giants versus Phillies series. Preview. Another one. Do you have any uh, final closing points, Andrew, or are you all set? I'm pretty much all set. Just go out, win the series. It's all you can do. Obviously, like we said, sweeps are hard. So just go out. You, you got Wheeler and Eflin on the mound. You can win a Chase Anderson start. So just go out, take two or three. Um, you know what? I'm going to get a little controversial here to end it, whether you want to debate it or not. But – you know what? I'm expecting a lot of booze for Kapler, but I will always say oh. I'm a Kapler fan. I'm gonna, I, I, don't, I just want to throw that out there. I'm gonna end it in some controversy if it is controversial, but no, I, I'm a Kapler guy. I will, I'm still gonna be a Kapler guy, and I think what he's doing with the Giants is actually kind of uh, pretty cool if, if he's able to keep them afloat through this uh, season because I, uh, I do want to see him succeed out there. Obviously not against the Phillies, but just in no, no, yeah, <laughs> not, no, not against us, but. We both think they're take two out of three. We thank you all for joining for the Giants versus Philly uh, series preview. Uh, everybody, please like, comment, and subscribe as always. And enjoy the Phillies baseball. Enjoy whatever other baseball games you watch. And as always, stay safe and well out there. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>